Wake up. Wake up. Jimmy. It's time to wake up. I'm up. I'm up. Would you like to come downstairs for a breakfast of an appetizer of coconut shrimp? What? Sirloin steak. What? Brussels sprouts. And a crouton. Oh. Hold. The crouton. <laughs> the Brussels sprouts. Why? The sirloin steak. And the appetizer. Does it? Of coconut shrimp. Spoilers. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite breakfast. I'll be right down. Okay, Jimmy. I'll see you down there. Hey everybody, yes, welcome back to the Paid Search Podcast, my name is Jason Rothman, as always I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer, how's it going buddy? I am good buddy. Um, How are you doing Chief? I'm great pal. <laughs> how's it going Captain? Uh oh, I'm running out. Um, I'm great friend. How's it going big guy? Oh dear, I didn't think... I'm no no problem. You already said chief. Um, no problem, lieutenant. Uh, I, I you won. won. Yep, <laughs> lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> how, how you doing, man? How, how's it going? You know, Jason. Uh, moments ago, I was crying in the corner, thinking that life wasn't worth living anymore, and I don't love my wife, and I don't even think my kids are cute, and. I don't want to do my job anymore, but then I realized, oh, it's Thursday. It's time to record, and I'm great now. I'm great. <laughs> wow. Okay, Chris. Well, um, we've been talking before the show, and I, that's obviously a joke. I don't know if it's funny, but it's a joke. <laughs> it's my um, kind of joke. It's super speaking of, dark speak, and speak, awkward. Super, that's my favorite yeah. kind. Super, <laughs> dark, super dark, awkward, and not that Yeah, funny. Not, not funny. Just kind of like... Is he serious? What in the heck is wrong with him? That's when I laugh. Super dark, super awkward, not funny, yep. and makes the other person and anybody else uncomfortable. Who, hears, who hears it uncomfortable. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a great I love joke. to laugh at their yeah. uncomfortable. I've told you before, I, like you could go back to like episode 38. My favorite sense of humor, my favorite thing is making people uncomfortable. Not feeling comfortable is what I enjoy. So there we go. Chris, let me throw out a month and a year. For you. Oh, wow. And you tell me what how, th- how things were going for you, okay? July 2019. <sighs> so, summer a year ago. July 2019. How were oh, you Oh, man. What was going Extremely on Extremely stressful time. No, nothing really? like 2020. Really? But 2019, last year, um, I believe I took a whole month of work off, which was why I was inc- incredibly really? stressed, because I went on a, like... Um, I didn't take a whole month off, but I t- it felt like it was a month because I stopped taking new clients for like a whole month because I went to Alaska um, for like two weeks. So the week before I left, I had to stop taking clients so that I wouldn't have any account builds and work to do. And then I couldn't take any work one week after. So that was the whole month and I was gone. And uh, yeah, it was it was super stressful. Wow, that's interesting because I was looking up old YouTube videos mm-hmm. of our channel. By the way, a lot of comments, a lot of comments on on YouTube, Chris. Hey, where'd you guys go? <laughs> why are why <laughs> Sorry. isn't the video there anymore? <laughs> yeah, and there's there's a few reasons for that. Um, but right now we're just doing these uh, just st- the solid background there and, and just the audio. But uh, we might be back one day. But there's some comments like that. But I was looking at old uh, videos and. July 2019, you had a backwards baseball cap on, mm. and yeah, I, the reason I wanted to ask you what was going on then, because I, I couldn't tell if things were going really, really good then, or things were going bad. I just couldn't tell, because the, my, you just seem different than you have the past uh, month or two, and you, you've, you've seen like normal great, but the backwards baseball cap, the kind of shirt you were wearing... Yeah. The vibe yeah. is very, uh, it's kind of aggressive mm, almost. I could see is that. what I was looking at in the video. So I wanted to see what was going on back uh, then. Usually it has to do with whatever book I'm reading or video game I'm playing. So that's usually what it is. You're very influenceable. Yes, absolutely. 
I try and be a leader, but I follow. Uh, I tend to follow. So yeah, I'm very influenced by whatever book I'm reading. I usually apply whatever I'm thinking about through the lens of how the heroine or hero is dealing with things in my book. <laughs> so is, is that weird? Uh, probably, probably is. How many kids were at your 11th birthday party? It must have just been huge. <laughs> there must have just been a hundred people there. All your friends. Oh, so many. Oh yeah, huge, great party. I don't remember. You know what's sad is I, I had a birthday party at a laser place, you know, when those were big back in the day. Yeah. And we were eating pizza. And this must have been like, I don't know, like nine or eight or ten or something like that. And I remember looking around the table, looking at people. No. And there were only like 10 or 11 people no there. Way. And I was like, these are frauds. These are frauds. What? These are fraudulent people. They're not my friends. Why are they at my party? Some of them. <laughs> eight or nine years old. That's the way I was thinking. Wow. Kind of not good. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, laser. You remember the laser places? Oh, yeah. I, well, Jason, you wouldn't remember, but I remember the skating rink places. Now, that's past your point. <laughs> Those don't really exist anymore. Uh, yeah, I used to go to the skating rinks. We had those oh, parties. Man. That was that was a more that was a more trusting time with the public. Oh yeah, Just dark room. Everyone rolling, rolling the around. circle. Don't break your arms. Lights all loud music <laughs> with strangers. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of things that could go on there. That's an interesting thing. That it is, was the place to be. Yeah. yeah, those were big. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, yeah, you know, I guess that's before like lawsuits really took off because you know I, sw- I swear half the people walk out in like a cast like they have a they have like a whole <laughs> casting station right over beside where the one hundred percent there's guys who were in the roller uh, rink business or skating rink business that are now in the trampoline business. Oh, one hundred percent. Yep, that's a continuation of the business plan. Let me just start something hot that everyone wants to get in get in mm-hmm. on. And then as soon as people start breaking bones, because this is we're a out. crazy thing to offer the <laughs> yeah. public, we're out. <laughs> we're on to the next one. It's true. Oh, uh, yeah. Podcast is a great way to promote a, a business. And I was just thinking, like, can you imagine, like, the skating rink podcast or the or the laser place podcast or the mm. trampoline place podcast? What do they talk about? Well, this week we got some new cushions <laughs> in the pit. Oh, wow. <laughs> let's talk about that for talk- now. all right chris let's go we got a q and a here we go tee us up that's here. right we'll so the guys thank you for listening to the pay search podcast and please support our sponsors optio optio.com slash psp2 you can get an eight week free trial let me tell you about something i have not told you about this amazing system and why you should sign up now they have In addition to their improvements engine, in addition to their performance graphs that give you tons of data in a new format that really light up your your creativity juices on how to change and see your numbers in new ways, they have a reporting system. You can create reports for your clients. So let's say you run an agency. This is a system that can help you get more done in Google Ads and send reports and look at metrics all in one system. And let's say you work at a company and you have a boss who's always on you about stuff. You can stay on top of that with the great improvements designed system, uh, the performance metrics that are built in with great colored graphs and all kinds of things, and the reports which you can print up and send to your email, uh, send to your boss over email so he has more things to yell at you about. You're going to like it, okay? It'll make your life easier. Uh, so, opteo.com slash PSP2. That's opteo.com slash PSP2. Use the chat at the bottom. Tell them you heard about the show on the Paid Search Podcast. They will give you eight weeks for free. All those other people who signed up without that little keyword in there, without that mentioning of the the paid search podcast, they only get 30 days. Don't be a loser. Be a winner with Optio. Thanks, Chris. So let's kick this off. Q&A. Um, send us your questions at paidsearchpodcast.com on the contact page or leave us a comment on YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, but not Instagram because we don't know how to log in. What? 
So this question comes from Nick from Toronto. Hello. Thanks for answering my last question about duplicate search terms popping up in the wrong ad groups. I inherited that account, trying to find ways to fix up without losing leads. Anyways, I have another question. How do you deal now with exact match terms that once were not bidding against each other, but could possibly be doing so in a quote, post variant world. And he said, that sounds apocalyptic, but Chris, I don't say post variant world like you do. So why don't you go ahead and say that (laughs) post variant world. They don't show up as bidding against each other with Google's find duplicate function in editor because they're different keywords and that, that one looks for exactly the same keywords. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now with exact match open up so much, they most likely are. Hmm. Uh, what do you do? Thanks, guys. Keep it up. Love the show. P.S. Be nice to Chris. Mm. He needs some kind words. And, you know, Aww. this question, we, we we bank up the questions. Chris is doing just fine. This probably came from <laughs> a rough earlier. Late, kind of probably. <laughs> let me guess. Oh, maybe late spring yeah. <laughs> would be when this that's question when I, probably came. almost in, fell man, apart. Chris was going through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd get <laughs> going through it, yeah. but we made it. Yeah, Jason suffered through with me. Um, okay, uh, Nick, uh, again, good question. And I don't remember if I crapped on your last question or not. I believe I did because I said your question is wrong because you're doing it wrong. And I think I, I think I think I didn't give a very good answer because I didn't respect the question itself. I criticized you, and essentially, I think I'm going to have to do it again because at this point. I don't think that a keyword, and Jason, you tell me, because I, I want some I want some back and forth on this. Tell me, am I wrong? A keyword that shows up for the same um, search term as another keyword that can show up for that same search term, I wouldn't necessarily be concerned about that. I wouldn't consider that a duplicate. I wouldn't consider that to be competing and you know bidding against each other i'm not i i do not go in and can you know if i i see it all the time i see uh when i look at my search terms i'll see a search term for this one and a search term for this one and they might be the exact same thing and unless there is a problem with the ad copy and i have you know this is very specific and this is the wrong kind of keyword for that ad copy and maybe that keyword's too broad so it's bringing in the wrong kind of traffic and I need to make an adjustments to that keyword. But if it's happening and the ad copy works for both of them, I have no problem. I take no action by adding negative keywords or blocking it on one because they're not really, you know, competing. You know, you're, it, it can show on either one and Google's going to grab the one with the best ad rank. And um, I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't consider this to be a problem Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And Nick, I'm kind of getting some vibes from you that I get from my wife, Cynthia. And um, <laughs> we got to we gotta slow it down on these worries here, Nick. Um, <laughs> I'll be lying in bed, Chris, you know, yeah. made a ton of money that day, did a ton of great yep. work, worked really hard, then spent time with our son. I cooked dinner. Like mm-hmm. I did everything. I took care of the dogs. Amazing. I did everything I needed to do. Amazing. Wound down, drank some Diet Coke, mm-hmm. watched the cable news shows I love to watch. Mm-hmm. I'm all teed up for bed. I'm all ready to relax. Okay. And then you know what she does in the dark in our bedroom right before bed? No. Nope, not that. Some of that audience out there stop needs that. to stop. Nope. Because that's my wife <laughs> you're talking about right now. That's my wife. What she does right before bed when it's dark, she brings up household stuff that needs to get done that is the biggest stressors in my life like she'll be like i think the fence post on our is it east or west oh it's on the west side needs to be replaced (laughs) we we need to call that guy who who did we use is the roof cynthia (laughs) please 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 i'm i'm i don't want to be stressed about this right now i'm about to go to like please so i had to talk to her about that and the way her brain works she's all about like thinking about that stuff right before bed for me i'm the exact opposite so nick come on man like (laughs) this is not something we gotta worry about here like we gotta focus on we did this to him last time i think too (laughs) what's going on in toronto nick stop it uh, i i like i like the way you're vigilant 
I like the way you're vigilant, but this is not a problem. And the, and the reason why it's not a problem, we're just having some fun with Nick, is because Nick's talking about two different, uh, he's talking about different keywords. So usually this question comes up where someone has like, oh, I want to use the keyword in this ad group, but now I also want to use it in that ad group, or I have hundreds of keywords and I'm worried they're in different ad groups or different campaigns competing against each other. This isn't that. As long as, as long as the keywords are different, they're different keywords and it's yeah. on Google to not make you compete with yourself and not charge you more than you should be charged for that. And they say they don't and they don't because they're different keywords. And just because they added in close variants, that doesn't change the fact that when you put those keywords in the account, the keywords are actually different words. So for some more information on this, there's a Google ads help article about similar keywords in different ad groups. And they talk about having multiple keywords that could match the same search term shouldn't increase your cost in any way. Uh, the set of preferences detailed below determines which keyword is used to enter the auction. Once the ad enters the auction, it's then compared with ads. This is key from other advertisers and your cost per click is what's minimally required to hold your ad position and any ad format shown with your ad, such as cycling. So the point is, even if the keywords are the same, well, I don't want to go that far, but even if the, the keywords are similar and because of close variance or not because of close variance, regardless, they could show up for the same search terms, say like a phrase match versus an exact match that are very similar. Google is pu putting this in writing here they shouldn't increase your cost in any way. I don't like that wor wor wording though. Why, why, why would you wor use the word shouldn't? Yeah. Like, Hey, shouldn't. Yeah, they shouldn't. shouldn't. That's why we're going to yeah. you for help. This is the help doc. Google. Give us some more. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they're, they're saying that it doesn't. And, uh, Nick, I would not worry about that. I would, if you like having, and I, I like having this as well. If you like having keywords in your account, uh, that are like close to each other and could show up on the same search terms, maybe like a phrase match and an exact match for the same word. You could show up on the same search term for that. I like doing yep. that. And I like getting data sure. on the, the different versions of the keyword, close versions of keywords, uh, that are similar to each other. I like getting the data and bidding on that data. Sometimes I use the same exact bid for a long time. And I just bid at the ad group level. But I like at least having the data. Sometimes Google's uh, suggestions tell me, hey, you got a bunch of kind of keywords that are the same. Why don't you prune them down so it's easier to manage? I don't I don't like doing that. I like having the keywords there. And they're telling us in the help, hey, it's not a problem. You're not going to cost more than it should. But Nick, the one thing, think about it from a management perspective. If you have a bunch of a bunch of keywords that are very, very similar and you're trying to run some automated bid strategy or you're just trying to do very efficient manual bidding, you could be making things harder on yourself than they are, than they should be by having that data, that 50 clicks stretched across 20 keywords. Mm. And each keyword has an average of 1.2 clicks. When in reality, three keywords could have 17 clicks or whatever, yeah. and you could get a lot more data. So it's kind of, it kind of depends on your management style, but I, I wouldn't be worried about close keywords making things cost more than they are than they would at all i wouldn't worry yep. about that just leave go big go based on your management so okay all right we have grace from sweden hello from sweden i love your podcast but i don't know what to do with my account i've tried adjusting bids match types i've tried automated bids but nothing is working what do you do when your metrics are dropping and nothing seems to help? Any last minute panic ideas? So Grace is in trouble here. Any ideas? So Chris, nothing, nothing's working. It's not about a bid. It's not about a keyword. Just nothing's working. Um, for me, the way, they, the way I would answer this, and then I'd be interested to, to see how you would go about this, I would, I would go back to basics and I would just build a new campaign and I would, I would, you don't have to do a lazy man build. You can listen to that episode, a recent episode. We did, two, I think two episodes on the topic. You don't have to go that, uh, small and basic, but I would get back to basics kind of like that. And you can do lazy man. You don't have to do lazy man, but I would get back to basics. 
what would your perfect customers be searching for in Google if, if they were looking for you? Try to show up on those searches, come up with some good ad copy, and then the one area, get your location right, your schedule right. The one area where you can kind of get yourself in trouble and kind of fool yourself is with volume. And if you don't get your budget right, if you don't get your bidding right, you might have the great, great keywords, but you might not be getting volume because of your budget and bid issues. So I would definitely set your daily budget to a large enough amount where you could get like two to three clicks a day. And if that means you have to run less days a month, then so mm. be it. But I don't want to kind of be wondering if it's not working because I have like a $5 daily budget on a $15 cost per click kind of campaign. Yeah. So get a nice daily budget, get good search, good search terms, good keywords. And then I like doing this. This is what I do when I have problems. If, if something's not working, bid aggressively, bid a lot, make sure you get volume, get volume from those good search terms. If you're spending your full budget very quickly, Start dropping your bids, focus on your position, back to basics, focus on search terms, and making sure you're not tripping over yourself with any budget or bid issues. What else can you do, Chris? I I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, rather than repeating you, I'm going to give another kind of uh, panic idea to go with it. So what I would say is, uh, I kind of mentioned this uh, last week, um, you know, the like go fat or go lean, you know, kind of go all, you know, try different things. So. I believe it was go fat, go lean, go sloppy. <laughs> and then the big mystery is what happens after that. And where are you and who you are win. you with? You win. I, and what's the That's outcome? the secret. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So here's what I would try. Maybe you're making, maybe the problem, and I've seen this so many times, when someone owns the business, when someone knows the business, when someone's very close to the business, they literally can't see past their own nose on the campaign. Like they can't see the client, they can't see the keywords, the search terms. They don't understand what high funnel is, low funnel. They're looking so small and micro focused that they're thinking about keywords that are light years past what people are searching. So they literally have no volume. Pull back. Pull back from this micro, get a much bigger view, and here's how you do it. Because I'm not going to say come up with new keywords because that's the whole problem. You can't do it. Try this. Put pure broad keywords in. Take the same keywords you're doing. Put some pure broad keywords in there and do a targeted audience plus those pure broad keywords. This is going to help you go from millions of potential impressions down to maybe tens of thousands. Try and pick something that's somewhat related to what you're selling. If it's lead gen, pick an audience that fits. If it's in market, if it's uh, uh, something that is uh, you know specific to business or um, something that's affinity or you know a hobby or an interest or something like that, go with a broad keyword. Listen to our old episode. Use broad keywords like a pro. Uh, and then do a targeted audience. And that's kind of been, uh, you know, a panic. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to pick the right keywords. I don't know what kind of audience I have. Um, just pick a few targeted audiences, see what you can do there. You know, at least you're narrowing it down to something a little more targeted than just the general public on that. And uh, that's the only thing I'd have to say beyond that. And it's kind of a panic. You know, sometimes I do that with clients that are like, you know, itching on that trigger finger to fire me. You know, I'm like, I, I okay, I, I got to get something moving. I have to make a miracle happen here to get something to pull through. And that's, that's what I might do sometimes. Yeah. And the, the big thing, uh, Chris is Google ads, search engine marketing, advertising on search. I, I always say to kind of check yourself and like, if something's not working, is it you or is it the, the product? There's no reason why Google Ads search would never work uh, unless people aren't searching for that. Yeah, that that's the only service. Yeah. Like that's the only thing. And there's other kind of uh, situations where it quote unquote doesn't work for you, where maybe everybody else is willing to bid way more. You show up number five or six and aren't able to spend your budget. Uh, maybe you don't convert well. Maybe you don't know what you're doing with conversion tracking and you don't know what you're doing with bidding and all that. But in terms of like, Running ads on keywords and then seeing good search terms in your search terms report and, and actually being able to get some clicks from things you want to get uh, clicks from, searches you want to get clicks from, 
There is no reason why it can't happen unless people aren't searching for your product or service. So if people are, and I guess you can verify that with the keyword planner, if you see some volume in your area, then there is a way to figure out how to get clicks from the things you want. So I, I kind of use that as my North Star of like, are we kind of like wasting our time here? We're never going to figure it out or crack the code or no, the, the code's been cracked. Other people are doing it. We, we got to figure it out because it is, it is something that's going to work. So that's kind of, if it ain't working, that's the question I ask myself. This next question comes from Thomas from Facebook, and she's running a remarketing campaign uh, using a similar to audience with a budget of a few dollars a day. And her question was whether that would work or if the small budget is an issue. And so what I want to ask you, Chris, is when you talk about uh, remarketing in general, what would you do if a client came to you and said, does remarketing mm. work? How would you answer that question? And can it work with just a few dollars a day? And then the second question is, what's up with the similar to audience? Mm. What's going on there? And then do those work? Is that even remarketing as you would refer to it? So kick us off here. Why would you do remarketing? What are the reasons to do it? Does it work? Mm. What do you tell your clients when they ask you about yeah. that? Okay. If I was Jason, I feel like I would threaten a physical assault. I would want to slap them. Um, but instead, I'm going to use an illustration and say, do you feel that that low tire indicator on your car works? Do you feel that you constantly think about, oh, I need to get these tires fixed or I need to get that looked at? Of course it does, because it always catches your attention. It's always there. It's a reminder about something that would otherwise you'd never think about. There's four; Those four tires on the road are no difference to you. You're not thinking about, I wonder how my tires are working today. No, you're not thinking about that. But that tire indicator reminds you, I need to get that looked at. I'm, you know, constantly keeping on the top of your mind. That's the way remarketing works. It keeps putting that one thing in front of you. And the fact is... Click-through rates on remarketing are very, very low, okay? So I'm not talking about a boost in traffic. I'm not talking about huge number of conversions. Um, I'm talking about the best deal you get in Google Ads, period. Free advertising. You get impressions. You can get tons of impressions with a low budget. You can have, you know, put a low bid on there and open that thing up to show 24 seven, all visitors get, you know, a couple hundred thousand impressions a month, you know, however many you have in your audience. If you have a small audience, great. If you have a big audience, great. Doesn't matter. A small budget will still make a difference. And I would say if I only had a few dollars to spend per month, per day, and you know, I'm not finding much success, the client's pushing back on the success of a search campaign. The fact is, is I'm going to just say, the best money you can invest is straight into remarketing. And to, so you like it. Yeah. No question. That's it. I hope that makes it clear. I think it is by far the best investment. And the best thing is you get one of the best parts of it for free. You get impressions shown to people who have been to your website for free. I mean, where, where, where else go anywhere else where you can get something for free. You can get YouTube ads shown to people but unlike display remarketing, you have to pay a cent for those to show up, you know, on, on at minimum. You have to pay one cent or, as I learned this week, one pence with uh, my friends in the UK as I talked to. Um, so you're going to pay a minimum amount for that. So with remarketing dis uh, impressions, it's free. So if we get into the next question, similar to, similar to. So, well, Chris, I mean... Like some days I spend fifty dollars to two hundred dollars on remarketing for some campaigns. So I just don't want anyone to get the wrong impression. Like it's free because you get some of your impressions. You can get impressions before the cost per the before the clicks come in. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. It's okay. It's not free. I mean, you're selling it good. I'm selling it. Yeah. I'm I mean, I just don't good. want people thinking like yeah. it's free. Jason, I, I get checks straight from Google for saying the things that I say. I mean, you don't you get your check every week? <laughs> For saying things are free on Google, I get my check for for the ideas yeah, for, the, for the ideas like the language yeah, thing we yeah, talked about yeah. last week. Um, Chris, 
Yeah, any any business out there can spend a three dollar a day budget, yep. hundred dollars a month, maybe a lot less, and rack up a maybe what, possibly up to a thousand impressions per click, um, sure, and not have to pay a lot yeah. of money. So yeah, so the next question is, what about similar to remarketing audiences? I'm mm. I never do never. that. Nope. I'm wondering if there's something I sh- I'm missing. How do you feel about those? I. I also never use the similar to audiences. I do not feel that a similar to is in any way interesting to me because of two things. Number one, my theory is this. Many users on the internet look a lot alike, and I will prove it to you by looking at a display campaign that's left wide open. Let's ignore mobile apps and look at a display campaign left wide open to anybody who can see it you can almost always see some of the top three domains within the first, you know, few 50 placements. You're going to see some very com, you know, people logging into Gmail. You're going to see certain news sites and all kinds of things. It's going to be very common to see that. And if that's true, how different is your browsing history than someone else? How much similar to is someone if, 90% 90% of your audience goes to these same three, four, five, ten 10 different websites. You're supposed to match someone to be similar to that audience. You just match to 300 million people, you know, like it's you're, you're similar to audience doesn't look that oh, different. Mr. Mr. Skeptical. I don't believe what, it. What if, what if it, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> what if it's someone who like, what if you, what if you sell backyard decks and that's your business you're in and your remarketing list happens to be people who've been on backyard decks and then sim- or people who've been on sites about that your site that's your remarketing list and then google goes oh, okay that's what they all have in common so let's kind of create a similar similar list of people mm-hmm. who've done searches like our backyard decks cool backyard decks near me <laughs> backyard decks memphis and maybe people who've been to other websites that it just says backyard decks all over the website. Things are improving with AI these days, Chris. I might be an artificial intelligence podcast partner. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, the system yeah. crashed. <laughs> My self destruct. <laughs> okay. So no, I mean you're you're not buying into no, that. No, I'm not because my. I mean you're not even buying into the point where you don't even want to. I don't. Test I it. don't you even test even it burn. because if I want to, let's say it works. Why does it work? Show how you can improve it. You can't because it's a mystery box that you're poking at and you can't see on the inside of it. What I'd rather do is build my own topics and audiences and keywords and and, and, and device targeting and figure it out on my own. And, and throw on some remarketing. And, yeah. Because it. th- it's yeah, remarketing. Try some stuff on my own because then I get to see the gears and how it works and how I can optimize. I'm paid to optimize a campaign. And if I'm like... I throw a black box into it. I'm like, we'll see if this works. Let's say it does work. Well, what do I do now? I don't know how to improve that. What if it stops working? How do I bring it back? I don't know. How do we know when? Yeah. You are you are a very efficient Google Ads manager with the client's budgets. Oh, I can tell oh, that. Absolutely. You, you, you love getting less budget mm-hmm. than you actually need, and you love making the most of it. Yep. And you, you love it. You're like, okay. You gave me a thousand a month. I need three thousand to make this work, but this is a challenge. I'm going to figure Done. it out. I'm going to go to the most efficient, most productive places with your budget, and we're going to do good. I love that about you. I think uh, a situation like when should I run similar to on remarketing versus regular remarketing? Maybe do that when you don't have any other problems in your account okay. and you're maybe. maxing out the spend you can do. I mean, maybe like just imagine if you're in a spot, Chris, where you're getting perfect search terms, you're 100% impression share, uh, you're doing remarketing, you're 100% display impression share, you're running 24-7, you're running in the widest location possible. Yeah, let's let's see. And the client still wants to spend some money. Maybe that's the time to, to try it out. All right, let's go to another question. Um, Teresa from Rochester, New York. And before I read it, I want to re- remind you guys to go to optio.com slash PSP2 to sign up for the eight-week free trial. Remember what I talked about? They do an improvement engine, which gives you high-priority, low-priority improvements to 
to get more out of your campaign without stressing you. They give you a wonderful metric chart with graphs and colors to see things. And they also offer reports as well um, for you guys that want to send wonderful uh, graphical reports to your clients or to your boss or to yourself. Uh, so try it out, opteo.com slash PSP2. Teresa says, hi, thank you for the podcast. Just found you last week. Our company is thinking about launching a Google Ads PPC campaign soon, but we already show up number one or two on a lot of our potential keywords. The good searches you talk about, like our service plus the geographic city, uh, they show up on those. Should we advertise on those keywords even though we already show up really high organically? Mm. Thank you from Rochester. Okay, Jason, I hear all kinds of answers from people. I get nervous because I, I don't mess a whole lot with, with SEO and you know, I, I don't really have a whole lot of data of how, you know, to prove that paying for things is a, you know, a good investment when you already show up organically. Should someone pay when they're already getting it for free? What's the value? What do you think about? Is it worth it for this company to do that? Okay, this is one of those things, Chris, where, yes, obviously, if I tell you you should run ads on Google, it's because I make money managing people's Google ads, so... Yes, I understand that conflict of interest mm -hmm. or that connectivity of interest. There is no conflict there. You you called like you wanted me to do your Google ads. You know what I mean? I get this question from people. They call me up. They're like, hey, I want to do Google ads with you. And then they're like, but I already show up number one or two. And I'm like, you called okay, me, <laughs> but you call me. <laughs> so obviously you want to do true. something there. So let me tell you why. It's one of those things that's very straightforward, very simple. Like either, and the thing is, either someone's going to get this and agree with it and see see what I'm saying, or they're just not. So I say yes, because if you show up number one or two organically, what? how many clicks out of 100 would you get? Maybe like 10 or 12 or 14 or 15, something like that. You, yeah. you get a share. Your click-through rate... Or, Organic click through rate, it's it's high, but people also click on ads. People also click on position five, position ten. A very strange set of maybe a quarter of percent of people always go to page two. Page two, <laughs> very very thorough people, <laughs> just to see what's there. So, uh, but but other parts of the page get clicks, so you don't get every click if you're in position one organically, and there's other clicks you can get. And you can get other clicks, 3% click-through rate, 4% click-through rate, 5, 6, sometimes 7, maybe more of those same searches. The same 100 searches that you're getting 12 to 15 on in their first organic position, you could get another 3 to 7 on, maybe more, if you show up in the ads at the top of the page. So if you can do that profitably and get another 3 to 7 whatever of customers whatever you do for your customers, why wouldn't you want that extra set of customers all month long, as long as it's profitable? So I always recommend, even though it's on the same search results page, even though it's on the same search, look at it as different profit centers. You do whatever you do with SEO, your content, your outreach, making your website really good, focusing on SEO, all that stuff takes time and money so it's its own profit center. Like, what did we put into our website and our outreach to show up there? What are we getting from it? That's its own thing. But Google Ads is its own thing. What did we spend and what are we getting for it? And it there's no reason you wouldn't want that last, or I shouldn't say last, but that extra 3 to 7% on average of the searches every day coming to you if you can convert some of them profitably because you wouldn't be getting them otherwise even if you show up in number one, it's just a different, organically, it's a different thing. So is that not like a irrefutable argument, Chris? Is there yep. any holes in that logic? Or is that nope. is that as real as it gets? I, I like it. I like it. And listen, Teresa, you're from New York. I'm from Texas. Let me say it in a way that you'll understand, because I know New York people definitely relate to Texas analogies. Do you hunt for ducks 
with a rifle? No, Teresa, you don't. It, it, what, have you never been hunting for ducks before? You go with the shotgun. You use a shotgun. And why do you use your shotgun? Because you use multiple pellets to hit that duck. You don't use a rifle. A rifle is one I would like to use a lot. You hit your target. You spread. You're more likely to hit your target with a lot of projectiles. So there you go, Teresa. Um, a wonderful illustration from your friend in Texas. Thank you guys for listening, subscribing, sending those $20 bills consistently to the address in the show notes that keeps us going and also supporting our sponsors. We're about to jump into our exclusive lounge of I mean, just patrons Beef. and we just yeah, just we we just share everything. We just we we get we just give money out to people. Just it's a glorious event and it's a super high price to get in. And if you can't afford that, then please uh, consider uh, being more responsible with your money. Uh, We will talk to you next week.